My name is Pontus Giselsson. I work as an associate professor at the Department of Automatic Control, and my main research focus is on optimization. Optimization is a mathematical field that you can use when you want to do something as good as possible. So in control, we typically use tools from optimization in order to achieve that. But optimization is not restricted to only be applied in control. It can also be applied in many other fields, such as signal processing, statistics, bioinformatics, and economics. Optimization is also used in machine learning, for instance, in classification, where you try to decide, for instance, on an image, what is on this image. So you can have an image of a cat, and the machine should tell you that the image depicts a cat. Another field of machine learning is doing generative machine learning instead of classification. One example is that we can generate images of faces that do not correspond to a real person. So I have always been interested in things that are difficult, whether it may be in different types of sports or work related. And math is one of the most difficult subjects that you can learn in uh, academia. And this is one of the reasons why I came to math. I like solving problems. I think that is challenging and it's also really rewarding once you have actually solved the problem that you have been looking at and thinking about for several months. So for instance, you can optimize the route in a GPS. We would like to go from a point A to a point B. And we have to follow the roads that will take us from A to B. And there will maybe several options. So what we do in optimization is that we would like to find either the fastest way to go from A to B, or the shortest way to go from A to B, or a way that minimizes fuel consumption. We also have another construct in optimization, which is called constraints. And in the GPS example, this means that we need to follow the roads. This is a graph of a function, which we call f in this case. And what we are after in optimization is to find the point that has the smallest function value. So if we look at this figure, the point of smallest function value is here. This point then corresponds to, for instance, the shortest path from A to B in a GPS example. We talked about in the GPS example that we also have constraints and constraints enforce us to only consider points uh, within a certain range of all the points that we can consider. If we have constraints here, this will be the minimal point in that case, which again will give us the best way to go from A to B in the GPS example. In many of the applications that we have talked about, the number of variables can go to hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions. And in those cases, it's impossible to visualize it and directly look at the graph to see where the solution is. And we instead need to use an algorithm that iteratively tries to find a solution to the problem. An algorithm is a computer program that follows specific rules in order to, in this case, find a solution to the optimization problem. So for instance, if we now consider a two-dimensional example, so we have uh, two variables in the plane, and this is the solution that we want to find. So when we have an algorithm, we start by guessing maybe that the solution is here. It turns out that in this case, we can see we have not solved the problem because the guess and the actual solution are not at the same place. So we need to update our guess on where the solution is. And then we do this many, many times until we find a point that is at the solution or at least close enough to a solution. One very simple algorithm is the gradient descent method and it produces sequences of points according to the following rule. And the variation of this algorithm is used in training of machine learning machines, and it works as follows. If we call this point that we had previously in the example for x0, 
Then we update, so when k is zero, this here is one. So these rules tell us how to obtain the next step of the algorithm. So we take a step in the negative gradient direction, and this will take us to the next point, x1. The same rule applies when we go from x1 to x2. So from x1 to x2, we get the same rule, and from x2 to x3, and so on. The main problem or difficulty in algorithm analysis is to actually show or prove that the sequence of points that is generated by the update rule actually, in the end, will find a solution to the optimization problem. We have seen a big improvement in many different fields that use optimization, but it has not been spread to all fields where it could potentially make a big impact.